think the general philosophy behind PlayStation All-Stars as a game is a mashup. And so uh, when it came to the levels, uh, we simply just applied the same thinking that we were already applying to our character roster. The levels and the mashups, they don't just sit uh, next to each other, they actually do inter interact. And I think that was really important for us to have the world sort of recognize each other and interact with each other and have that interplay. You have these morals that are very near and dear to everyone's hearts, both the players and the developers, and we still want to uh, sort of capture the essence of both of those characters and not have anything diluted. And so we know a lot of our fans are going to be able to pick up on that and sort of appreciate uh, that sort of nod to their knowledge about sort of the PlayStation universe. So we kind of take a lot of approaches uh, when coming together with some of these matchups. Some characters are really good at dealing with characters that are right in front of them. Uh, that can be close and far range, like a Kratos or a Radic. And then you've got other characters who are really well suited to dealing with characters directly above them or below them. And so what we start to do is we begin to create play spaces that can take advantage of some of these character advantages and disadvantages. You'll have levels like Prapa's Dojo, which are really empty, sort of blank slates, but it's an extremely small level. It's actually one of our smallest levels, so the, the sort of claustrophobic feeling combined with the lack of verticality creates a very specific sort of play style. And then you've got levels like Time Station, which has a lot of vertical platforms, or Alton's Tower, which is essentially a completely scrolling level full of platforms. It's really taking advantage of the different sort of character attributes that we have, and uh, putting those characters into these levels that, uh, in which they can sort of exploit those differences. working with a producer, John King, who is very famous in the music world. And what we're doing is we're taking some original sort of takes on very classic PlayStation music. So when you go to Sandover Village, you'll hear the very familiar Jack and Dexter music, but sort of reinterpreted by John King. And then as the matchup uh, gets introduced and sort of progresses across the levels, uh, John actually is remixing and reintegrating that, that mashup's home music as well and create an, an all new piece. We actually started out with an interesting challenge. We wanted two very specific fight spaces. Uh, we really wanted a very small claustrophobic fight space. So actually the first part of Uncharted is our smallest fight space in the entire game. And then eventually, just like Drake did, you spill out into the back and now all of a sudden you're fighting in the back of an airplane, which is actually one of our largest play spaces. So it creates a very drastically different uh, play style. So instead of you know crashing down, you sort of continue to float up and then you're introduced to the Bioshock Infinite world. And that uh, songbirds occasionally flying through the level or a missile will occasionally hit the plane is almost incidental. It's kind of a coincidence. Uh, they're, they're not even really aware of what you guys are doing back there. It makes for something that's uh, a really epic, kind of crazy, fantastic level, but we knew we had to hit it and I think we did a really good job. Of course, the levels aren't important, but only a, a small part of the PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale experience. Of course, we've got our characters, items, we've got modes, we've got a bunch of stuff to talk about, and we will be talking about it uh, between now and when the game comes out uh, on the PlayStation 3 and PS Vita this November.